Are you happy? Now you can admire Michelangelo's David, the work that more than any other has driven you to visit this museum. Let's immediately clear up something that you might have been curious about. If you're wondering how tall the David is, well, 5 meters and 17 centimeters. Michelangelo began the work on the statue in 1501, commissioned by the Opera di Santa Maria del Fiore, which intended to place the sculpture on a spur of the cathedral's dome. But when the David was completed, it was clear to everyone that he deserved another location. The importance of the choice of the David's place of location was so clear that an expert committee was specially formed, made up of the greatest names of the day, Sandro Botticelli, Filippino Lippi, Leonardo da Vinci, and Pietro Perugino. And on this occasion, Leonardo clearly showed all the hatred he felt toward Michelangelo, proposing to relegate the David to a niche under the portico of Piazza Signoria, in a secluded spot, as he wrote, so as not to interfere with the official ceremonies. Leonardo also said he did not appreciate the anatomical excesses, to such a point that he drew a sketch, in which the David was depicted with almost caricatured traits. Look how out of proportion it is in comparison to the original. Don't those muscles seem a little over the top? Aren't those legs a lot stockier? In the end, they did not listen to Leonardo and chose Piazza Signoria as the destination, in front of Palazzo Vecchio, right there, where today there's a copy. The David then shed the guise of a biblical character and became a symbol of the Florentine Republic. But let us take a step back because there is still something else that we must talk about. The David was carved from a single block of very fragile marble, which two other sculptors, Agostino di Duccio and Bernardo Rossellino, had tried to work with. The block was too narrow and long, and it was thought that the legs would not hold the weight of the entire sculpture. When the marble passed into Michelangelo's hands, there were anthropomorphic forms already sketched into it so that some people already called it the giant. The enterprise was the talk of the town even before it was started, and Buonarroti, to avoid prying eyes, hid himself inside an enclosure of planks in order to sculpt. It took Michelangelo three years to complete his masterpiece, and the work was shown for the first time to an anxiously awaiting Florence on June 23, 1503. The sum of 400 florins was paid for the statue, a very nice sum, but we should not be surprised because Michelangelo was expensive. It is said that his wealth amounted to half of the assets of the richest Italian banker of the early 1500s. However, despite having this enormous amount of capital, he lived in absolute poverty. Since its creation, this impressive work has become the benchmark for all the sculptors to look at. Vasari also realized this and loudly declared, this work has truly silenced the cry of all modern and ancient statues, whether they be Greek or Latin. Michelangelo made an unusual choice. David is immortalized without the head of the defeated Goliath. In other words, before the epic battle. The determination in the frown showing no anxiety is amazing. It lets the viewer glimpse a certain contempt for the opponent he is about to face. Although this is a biblical character, Michelangelo represents David in a secular version. The head and hands are slightly larger than they should be, because they are the weapons that the hero needs to defeat Goliath. For the same reason, Michelangelo's David is strong and vigorous. Opposite to the common imagine that, in the small figure of the young hero, wanted to see God's intervention, giving him the strength necessary for the task. In contrast, in this hymn to the beauty of man, the power is not transmitted, but is self-produced and self-determined. To express the perfection of the human body, Michelangelo chose to represent the figure in its full nakedness, forcing the biblical interpretation. To justify his decision, he said he was inspired by the passage in which King Saul offers David his armor, and the young man renounces it, because it is too heavy. 